Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. I very welcome my friends and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Hello and welcome back to Big Mouth and you can keep this and any other conversation I ignite going over on my Twitter at Movies TV Mad, at my Vero, at Big Mouth One and the extension to this channel is my Instagram, Big Mouth. And welcome to the latest edition of the Doctor Who show and they finally confirmed the premiere date with a trailer. Wasn't that nice of them? Crisis. Big crisis. Serious crisis. Big serious crisis. Kisses. It's quite French that, isn't it? You don't know me. You're the woman that brought us together. Something's coming for me. We'll be right here. By your side. Let's go. Welcome to the end of your lives. People can save planets. Or we will take everything. Even the best of humanity. Consider as you hope for stop. Fancy a trip in the box? Don't forget. Don't forget, Doctor Who is back in the new year. Yes, it's officially confirmed that the first episode um, will air on BBC One on Sunday, the 1st of January 2020. And to the rest of that, us, it's New Year's Day. So obviously we know no Christmas episode. Chibnall has convinced the BBC that Christmas episodes offend people who are not Christian. So they've obviously fallen for this, so we can't have any Christmas episodes. I know a lot of non-Christian people who don't celebrate Christmas, who love the Christmas specials, but unfortunately this is the atmosphere and the environment that we find ourselves in. It's sad, but then again, after his festive offering last year, did we really want to sit through another hour and a bit of a Chibnall special anyway? Probably not. But maybe it would have been better because we know in season 12, the BBC wasn't taking any more of his nonsense. So the title of this New Year's Day launch episode is called Spy Fall. I think that's what it's called. It, maybe I've got it wrong, but I think it's kind of playing with Skyfall from Bond, and that's cool. That's a cool little title. So we also know from Chris Chibnall and the BBC that there's going to be plenty of multi-episode stories in season 12 of Doctor Who. I like that. I like two-part stories. I like continuing stories. As long as you give them room to breathe and tell their own story, and they're exciting, and you have a little bit of a cliffhanger ending, they could be cool. So this is, these are the changes that we've seen. The BBC wants to make money off of Doctor Who. And if you do Doctor Who properly without triggering people, you, you give it a story. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing that Doctor Who needs, which it didn't have last year, a flawed Doctor. You must flesh this Doctor out and she must be flawed. Because the Doctor has always been flawed, apart from season 11. In season 11... Um, the Doctor had high moral standards. She didn't have any issues. She didn't really annoy anyone. She wasn't the ball-breaking Doctor we know and love. Because Chris Chibnall and people who believe what Chris Chibnall believe, when you're representing women, they shouldn't have any flaws. They should be so-called good and proper. And it's really the male characters who should have the flaws and not the female characters. So basically, this is where the Mary Sue accusation happens with Ray from Star Wars. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that one, but this is where the accusation comes from because they, they want to represent women, that's right, but they don't want to develop their characters. They don't want to flesh their characters out. And this is where the underlining problem is. So last year, apart from Doctor Who being mediocre and underwhelming after episode three, it also didn't give us a very, very interesting Doctor. That's not Jodie Whittaker's fault. Jodie, Jodie, Jodie Whittaker is a very... Oh, excuse me, my throat. But basically, Jodie Whittaker is a really capable actress. 
with a really good CV, right? She's not the problem here. I wouldn't have personally cast her as the doctor, and he did because they'd worked together before, and that was really the only reason that he did, which I believe is wrong, but she's got a good CV. She's been in Black Mirror. <coughs> Sorry about this, my throat. But she's been in Black Mirror. She's been in a few other things. She's never really led anything before. But she was in Broadchurch as well. But she's never led a show. She's never been the main character. And I think that's something. There's probably a reason why that hasn't happened before. But here she is. The lead of Doctor Who. That's who we are. In a way, we're kind of stuck with each other now. So she's stuck with the fans. And uh, we're stuck with her. So what they should at least do is make her a flawed doctor. Flesh her character out. Make her interesting. Because if you're not going to do that, hell, why are we all watching? Why is um, Chibnall and the actors and everyone on set wasting their time if you're not actually going to make this doctor something special? You're, as I've said before on this, on this channel, you can't just stick someone in the middle and say she's a female you know, get your teeth round that. No, she's got to be flawed. She's got to be fleshed out. And this is what season 12 desperately needs. You can throw as many Cybermen at me as you want. As many Daleks, maybe a surprise return for John Sims Master as well. I don't know. The Cybermen actually look awesome. It's pretty much the same design we first saw in Doomsday in season two, but it's a, lot, a little bit more gritty. And there's a little bit more realism and they actually look a lot more scarier this time. So I do like what Chibnall's done with them. So it'd be interesting to see what they do. Maybe there'll be something a little bit more interesting about them rather than saying they're just going to delete us. Now, we all remember the Cyberwoman episode. Again, I've said this on this channel again. Cyberwoman was a great episode of Torchwood, but a lot of people don't like Cyberwoman. You'll have to ask people why they don't like that episode, but I think it's a really compelling episode. And they try to show us the struggle of a human being actually being half human and half Cyberman, Cyberman and not, not knowing which way to turn. And it was so tragic what Yanto, Yanto went through in that episode. And I really love that episode, but I know many of you hate it. And that is your absolute right. So we got, I, I think these trailers, this marketing have been a lot better than season 11. I'm a little bit more excited for this marketing, but as I say, it's got to be going somewhere. So we've got these multi-episode arcs, which I'm very excited about, and we've also um, got something, I hope we're getting this, that, that, that the show is actually getting a story arc, you know, running through, feeding through the whole season. I hope we're getting that, Otherwise, again, it's a waste of time. I think story arcs really help something. And I think when you get to the final, like maybe two episodes of the series or the finale, you need a story arc. A story arc that's led, you know, fed through, you know, fed through the whole season can really help your finale. finale because finales that don't have arcs end up with last season's season finale where you kind of have, you know who, I forgot his name now, but you have you know who in the first episode, then he turned up in the finale, but it didn't have any breath to it, it didn't have any emotion to it, because that was it, he was evil, he was the evil character that the Doctor defeated in the premiere of season 11, then he showed up again, it really didn't represent any high stakes or anything like that, and I think that's the problem with that, what's his name, I forgot, anyway, because I spoke to the actor who plays him, um, apparently he probably he is probably coming back, so That'll be interesting to see what they're doing with him. Um, but basically, it's like Chibnall and the BBC have to start from scratch here. It's just, it's they've got to lure people back. They've got to people be they want they've got to have people being excited for Doctor Who again. So what we know is multi episode story arcs. Um, we know that the Cybermen are going to be around, and we know that the first two episodes are called. Spyfall. I definitely think they're called Spyfall. This throw is terrible, but I'm going to per persevere for a little while longer. And so there's some lots of interesting elements. There's lots of questions that are going to be asked before we see a ball that's been kicked because of what happened last year. So A, I want an exciting Doctor Who with emotion. Um, I want to see the Doctor fleshed out. I want to see her have flaws like her previous incumbents have had. 
That is the doctor. The doctor isn't Superman. The doctor isn't a pure hearted hero. The doctor has flaws. The doctor is an irony to his or herself. So he's very, very, he's a contradictory. The doctor is a contradiction in terms. So he can't, he or she can't be standing there acting like they're the nicest person in the world. Sometimes they can be entirely selfish. Now, an interesting element there where, where uh, Bradley Walsh's grand says, who are you, doctor? So I think at that point, there's a question being asked. I like that. Then she asks a mystery person, would you like to come for a ride? Who is that? Do we see a return of Casgro from episode three, right, of last season? He was the villain in Rosa. I liked him. I thought there was a Captain Jack element here where the Doctor could make him a better person, teach him a better way, because that's what New Who has always been about, and what that kind of Doctor's been. But no, he was just a space racist. But if they bring him back and give him air to breathe, and maybe he changes his mind and the Doctor teaches him a better way, then you really do have a beautiful commentary on racism because I believe that anyone with racist tendencies can be taught a better way and take that hate from outside their heart. But you've got to be willing to give people an opportunity to do that. And if you don't, I think you are just as bad as they are. You don't just throw people away because their beliefs are pretty much not the mainstream beliefs. You look at them, you look at what they're saying and you think to yourself, you know what, I don't agree with them, but I, I want to try and inspire these people to not surgically take the hate. Hatred hates, hurts the hater. We all know that. So it, it, hurt, it hurts the hated more. It hates the hate, it, sorry, it hurts the hater more than it does the hated. So they're really hurting themselves, and it's good to, to teach people a better way, to look at life in a more optimistic way. And that's what New Who has been since episode one, Rose. That's the message that Russell T. Davies was trying to do with this doctor, with this New Who doctor. So I think if Casgro comes back, I'd be very, very interested in that episode. But who knows? Um, I have my doubts about that, but we'll see. I think we'll have a slightly improved uh, Doctor Who season 12. I think people will enjoy it slightly. I hope it's got a lot more depth. One of the problems last year had very, very little depth as well. Nothing really, I don't think really anything intense happened after Rosa, which was a shame. So as I already said, season 11 had fantastic production values. It looked beautiful. And all that hard work of those people making it look so amazing they deserve something to be going on within our characters, within our, our character, the Doctor, and that wasn't happening. And that's what Doctor Who um, fans demand, that we have more breadth, more depth, more intensity, and a fleshed out Doctor and a flawed Doctor. So I'm looking forward to the 1st of January. I hope you are as well. Uh, comment down below. If you like the video, smash the like button. And I will talk to you more about Doctor Who. And if there's any breaking Doctor Who news, I'll be right back here. And I still feel I would love Jodie Whittaker to, to have a five Doctors arc, bringing back Eccleston, Tennant, um, Smith, Capaldi. I would really, really, really enjoy it. Actually, how many Doctors has there been? Sorry, I can't count. Eccleston, right? Uh, you've got Tennant, you've got Smith, you've got Capaldi. And of course, um, you've got... What's his name? The War Doctor. That's right, John Hurt. Now, John Hurt's no longer with us, so you probably wouldn't count him, so it would be the Four Doctors. But it would be the Four... Hang on, no, Four Doctors, wouldn't it? I really can't count. Anyway, I'd love to see a Four Doctor arc for the modern era. I think this generation, and I think past generations, would really, really enjoy it. But again, like what I said on today's Star Wars show, don't let people... Um, convince you to boycott it, give it a go, see what you think. And of course, if you don't like it, you don't have to watch it, do you? See you again soon.